Hello, my name is Giovanni Macelloni and I present you this poster Low Frequency Wideband Radiometry, a new EO tool for investigating polar region. Passive microwave sensors were widely used for studying color, cold regions and recently L-band demonstrated its capabilities for monitoring sea or land ice and frozen soil because of the high penetration. The point is, can we do more with lowest frequencies? Indeed, lowest frequencies, so less than 1 GHz, penetrate deeper in the ice and we can infer information of internal properties of the cryosphere. How the system works? Here an example for the ice sheet. Lowest frequencies, 0.5 GHz, samples much of the ice column from the top to the bottom, while the high and mid frequencies, 1 and 2 GHz, sample shallower portion of the ice column. Theoretical results demonstrate that from a combination of frequencies, we can infer information of ice sheet temperature profile from the top to the bottom. Moreover, we can also detect the presence of water inside and at the bottom of the ice sheet. The same concept can be applied to other components of the cryosphere like ice shelf and sea ice, but also to permafrost. In addition, low frequencies exhibit a high sensitivity to sea surface salinity in cold water respect to the L-band. In order to prove this concept, experimental campaigns were carried out in recent years, in particular a microwave system in the frequency range 0.5 to gigahertz where it was developed in US and campaigns were carried out in Greenland in 2016 and 2017 and in Antarctica in 2018. In this campaign, different targets were investigated, including sea ice, ice sheet, ice shelf, and glaciers. Here are some interesting results from the campaign published in recent paper. An example of retrieval of temperature profile in Greenland. Here, the temperature profile from the top to the bottom is represented along the flight line. A computation of accuracy was also provided in the paper. Another result is the classification of the glacier phases. Figure shows how the frequency spectrum change depending on the glacier phases type. And lastly, another result is the retrieval of CI's thickness and salinity in different positions of the flight obtained during the campaign. Thanks to this interesting result, we propose now to move this concept from space. Here, a possible solution for developing this wideband microwave radiometer in a space mission with a large antenna of about 12-15 meters and a resolution on the ground from 8 to 40 kilometers depending on frequencies. With this capability, we have a revisit time of 3 days at the poles and 7 days at the equator. Special care is devoted to the mitigation of radio frequencies interference, which affect these bands. Here the main characteristics of the radiometer and here the parameter we plan to measure. In particular, we plan to measure ice sheet and ice shelf temperature profile, to measure the presence of intraglacial and water at the bottom of ice sheet and ice shelves, the sea surface salinity with high precision, and the sea ice thickness and salinity, which are not measured from space now. We propose this concept for future ESA mission and also for future NASA mission. Thanks for your attention.